How's it going guys? Welcome back to another catch cooking camp video. We're gonna be doing some camping. We're gonna be doing some trout fishing, but I just had to pull off the side of the road and show you guys this view. Every time I come up here, you just gotta take the time to appreciate the views. I'm on like the top of a mountain right now, and I can see probably a hundred miles off in that direction. Absolutely beautiful. It is so dry out here, folks. It is dusty. Everything is like still dead. The leaves haven't even come on the aspen trees and they usually have by this time of year. So guys, I'm about to go fishing at the lake just over there and I just made a real big mistake. So the two lures that I needed most of all, a Rapala and a Marabou jig, are the only two lures that I don't have. I have spinners, I have spoons, I even have these power bait pink worms, but I can't find a marabou jig. I guess I do have these little uh, ice fishing jigs, not even meant for like open water fishing, meant for ice fishing, but I suppose that could kind of be a marabou jig, not really, but. So lesson of the day folks, be sure you have all your fishing tackle before you drive an hour into the mountains and plan on spending a night and you don't even have the proper gear. So we're just gonna have to make do with what we have. I think I'm just gonna leave the little this little spinner on for now. And uh, yeah, hopefully this works. <clears throat> All right, let's catch some fish. <sighs> some of you might recognize this lake because I was actually just here in a video and I fished this little spot right here and absolutely slayed the brook trout. But since I don't have a marabou jig, I'm gonna have to try a spinner, which is gonna be a lot harder and trickier. But I think we can still get it done. All right, guys, it is the same scenario as last time. Except for now, I know that there's fish down there ready to bite. If we can get one on the first cast, you guys have to go down and give this video a like. You just have to. All right, I'm gonna let it sink all the way to the bottom. Oh, oh, oh! A follow. I had a follow. I had a follow. He came all the way up for it. No! Bro! Oh, wow, wow, wow. Whoa! Whoa! Wow. Guys, that could have been a freaking five pound fish right there that just broke me off. Alright, guys. Well, I think we're going to break out these guys, these little ice fishing jigs. I think I found these on like a the shore of a lake. I didn't even buy these and I think I've had them for like two years. Might as well put them to use today. All right, there we go. Honestly, that looks pretty good. Small little profile imitates a little bait fish. Here we go. Please do not break off this time. All right. All right, I think we're gonna get one this cast. It's happening. Yep, there we go, folks. There we go, just like last time. This was the last time I was here. It was instant. Get a bite on the, oh, and there he goes. That was just a little brook, so not a big deal. But that, there we go. I'm gonna count that. We are on the board. There we go, there we go, there we go. Nope, there's, there's, there's fish in here. There's fish in here. There we go, folks. This is so much fun. All right, I'm, this is a little guy. I'm just gonna flip him up here. Boom. First landed fish of the day. Beautiful little brook trout. And you know, guys, this would be a perfect one to keep. This is on the smaller side, but he's still big enough to get a good amount of meat off of him. So you know what? I think I'm gonna keep this one. Bring him over here. So I know some of you are gonna be like, why are you keeping a fish already? This is, I've been here like three minutes. Well, currently the time is 3.49 and I wanna smoke these fish tonight and the smoking process is gonna take at least a few hours. And I've already got only like four hours left of daylight. So I've gotta hurry, I'm not wasting any time. I should have got out here earlier, but I stayed up till like 3 a.m. editing a video and watching The Office, so. I guess it's my fault, but hey, we're here now. We have a fish, we're gonna smoke this guy up later. Preferably, I'd like to get at least two because if you're gonna go through all that work of building a smoker, 
you're gonna wanna smoke more than one fish. If we can get one more, we'll be all set. Ugh, I'm gonna put him out of his misery. That is a good looking fish right there. And we're just gonna set him right here for now while we keep fishing. Hopefully he doesn't flop away. I hit him quite a few times. Oh shoot, you've gotta be kidding me. Ah, snagged. I got snagged on that same log last time I was here and lost it. Well, that's what happens when you fish spots like this. You're gonna lose a few lures. Ugh. Yep, that went quick. Well, I think I could catch some more fish out of there, but I don't wanna stress them out too much. I mean, I was here just a few days ago and I really hit that spot hard, so I don't wanna like over pressure them. So I'm gonna focus on just fishing the main lake for the rest of this time. See if we can get a big cutthroat, because there are big cutthroat in here too. Like, trophy size fish. <clears throat> Bruh. Guys, I am not, ma I didn't do this. I'm not making this up. Look at that. Does that not look like a Bigfoot track? Look at that. Looks like there's toes right there. Dude. Guys, I didn't do that. I'm not making this up. I know kind of Bigfoot's been kind of a joke on my channel, but I did not do that. I just walked up on that. That legit looks like a big Bigfoot track. And then there's a little one right there. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Take that as you will. Guys, there's fish right there, right there. Right there on shore. Holy crap, that is nuts. That is nuts. I wish I could zoom in on a GoPro. Right on shore there, they're playing around. I'm not gonna get any closer. Cast in there, and I think I can get one of these dudes. All right, here we go. Oh, dude, first cast over there. I knew it, I knew it. That's a good one too, that's a really good one. That's a really good one. Like that's a really good one. I do not want to get any closer because I want to catch some more. Oh, he's got me in that log though. Oh, oh shoot. Okay, there he comes, there he comes. That's a good one. Oh, stay down, stay down. Guys, look at that. Look at that brook. Oh man. Look at that. Look at that toad. Just hooked right there in the corner. I'm gonna let this guy go. He's a little bit too big. I could keep him, but I don't know. This is a this is a solid fish. Gorgeous. <laughs> there he goes. A lot of times when that happens, after you catch one fish, you kind of stir up the hole and it freaks the other fish out and uh, they don't want to eat. Sometimes you can, like if I tossed in there, I still could catch another fish. It's just not as likely. But depending on how aggressive they are, they might all jump on it again. Oh, oh, got him, got him, got him. Another one, another one, another one, another good brook. Two of them went for it, two of them went for it, two of them went for it. Got him, got him, got him. Another nice one. Hey, hey, bud. Shh. Calm down, calm down. Hey. Calm down. Don't scare the other ones, please. Look at that. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, now this might be another one to keep. A little bit smaller than that last one, a little skinnier. Guys, I think we have another keeper. So, I've got two now. That's all the ones I want to keep for smoking. Now, I'm just going to keep fishing and try to catch a trophy. I think we can get another one, folks. Three for three right here. We need a cutthroat though. Oh, there was another one. There was another one. Dude, this is nuts. This is nuts. They are still fired up. Here he comes, here he comes. Jeez. He was like nibbling it. I could see his mouth open up and close. Just barely missed it. Let me go a little slower. Oh, he walloped it. I got him, I got him. Oh, shoot. Little guy, little guy, little guy, little guy, little guy. That is pretty. This one's a little more silver. 
Got those bright red dots, that's cool. Kind of a unique looking fish. A lot smaller, a lot younger. We'll toss him back quick. Got him, got him, got him. That's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh yeah, got him. Please be cutthroat. What is that? That's another brook. I I'm grateful though. I'm not, I'm not complaining, but who doesn't like a big cutthroat too? Another beauty. Got another one. Oh my gosh. That's the biggest one of the day. I didn't even see him. He came out of nowhere. Not the big cutthroat, but the biggest brook of the day. This might be my biggest brookie all year. Get over here. Ugh. Get over here. Oh man. Solid fish. Here we go, folks. Biggest brookie of the day by just a little bit. That's such a nice fish. Their colors are so amazing. Well guys, you don't know how much I would like to stay here and just keep fishing. But for now, since we don't have a whole lot of daylight and we still have a lot of things to do, we, even, we don't even have a campsite yet. So we gotta go find one of those. But while we're here at the lake, we're gonna clean those fish. Go up through there. There we go. Two freshly cleaned out brook trout that I literally hooked right on that log there. Now we have to go find a campsite so we can start smoking these guys for dinner. <sighs> Folks, I have found probably the coolest camping site that I've ever been at. So when I'm looking for a camping spot, there's a couple things I'm, in, I'm looking for. Number one, I want something with a lot of big trees around it for shade check number two as far away from the road as possible and the main road is clear over there here are the trees it's opened up into this little area we got a little tiny creek over there there's no fish in it but still kind of cool that little creek man i wish it was a little bit bigger and we could catch fish right by our little campsite here uh I have no idea what this is, but it looks like it's been here for a hundred years. Probably just some old truck or something. Oh, looks like a beaver just kind of started on that tree. Thankfully he gave up. Anyway, folks, here's the deal. It's about 5 p.m. right now and it gets dark at eight. And if I started smoking the fish right now, it would take at least two to three hours. And that's not even including the setup time and the brining time for those fish. So I'm not going to have enough time tonight. But what I can do is build the smoker and get it all ready to go. And get those trout sitting in some brine so they can absorb those flavors all night. And then tomorrow we'll actually do the smoking process. And uh, yeah, it'll all be good. I would just rather, you know, take my time, not rush things. I don't want to just throw it together real, really quick and not do it as well. So right now I'm going to set up a tent right here perfect little spot all protected by the trees Ugh. well now that that's all done i guess the next thing we're gonna do is build a smoker what i'm gonna do i usually when i've done it in the past i've used rocks i've just built up kind of a little rock chimney thrown some branches on top and kind of done it that way but this time since there's not a whole lot of rocks around here but there's a lot of sticks i'm gonna build a little teepee with a couple rocks around it and then i'm gonna layer the whole thing with pine needle branches that we have plenty of off into the wilderness to look for materials oh and look, this is perfect right here, folks. This is about the right size we want. Probably four or five feet or so. Maybe a little bit shorter than that. But if we can get a bunch of these, we'll be in business. Oh, there's a good one. Probably have to break a lot of these branches off, but this will work. All right, guys, so I gathered up a bunch of sticks. I also found some rocks, scrounged them up from out there. But uh, now... I think we'll just start the building process. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm just making this up as I go, really. I'm gonna kind of put the rocks at the base, kind of make a little circle like a regular campfire. All 
All right, guys, so I got the TP built, got plenty of sticks in there. Now I'm gonna layer it on the outside with a bunch of branches. One thing that I didn't really think of and I'm kind of worried about, we gotta make sure that the fire that we make in there doesn't catch the whole smoker on fire. These are pretty dry, brittle sticks. So we're gonna have to keep the fire really, really small because I don't want the whole thing to go up. That would uh, not be good. So we're gonna test it out tonight before we actually smoke the fish tomorrow. So we got a bunch of branches here. And basically what we're gonna do is just seal up all those ho holes. Obviously you can't cover all of it and you do want a little bit of ventilation in there. Then I got this little rope here, um, kind of paracord or whatever. I'm just gonna wrap this around all the branches and kind of seal it together like a newspaper, bundle it up. I know it looks janky, but uh, it'll work, I promise. But I've got this little uh, bit of rope left over, and what I'm thinking, I'm gonna rig this right through the center of it, tie it off on the other side, so we've got kind of the rope just going right through the middle of it that we can actually hang our fish on. Right through the center. Then we'll just tie it off on one of these logs. Honestly, I'm proud of this right here. I'd say that's sealed up pretty good. We'll probably throw some more branches over there, seal that up a little bit better. So yeah, let's build a fire in there. See how this thing works, geez. We got a little uh, wrapping paper there. That should catch easy. All right, so far so good. We're not burning anything down. Yeah, I think the key is just gonna really have a small fire. Ideally, you'd want a big old smoker with a lot of room inside, but I kind of wanted to keep it small. I mean, I'm only smoking two fish. All right, so I guess I'm gonna use the bed of my truck as a table. Here we have our fish, folks. They've been uh, sitting out for about an hour and a half or so. So they've kind of dried out a tad. So, for the recipe for smoking trout, the last times I've done it, I've let them sit in a wet brine, like some kind of marinade, teriyaki marinade, or something like that. But I watched a video online recently where um, they actually brined them in brown sugar and just set them in there and let them sit overnight. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little Tupperware container here, mix up the brown sugar and the salt, dump it in there. There we go. Shake it up. Shake it up. Then we're gonna take our trout. Don't need his head. We're gonna slice him right down the middle. Just like that. So I'm cutting them like this, so they're kind of butterflied out, because I'm gonna set them on that string like this, so the smoke can come up through it and uh, can hit the meat at a good angle. Do the same thing to the other one. Now here's a problem. The brown sugar mix and the Tupperware is only this big and the trout are this big and I have two of them. I think what I'm gonna have to do is just do one at a time. I'm gonna let this one soak until dark or maybe a little bit after dark and then I'll put this one in, let this one sit overnight. So this one is probably gonna taste a lot better. I'm just gonna pack that brown sugar in the cavity, body cavity right there really make sure it gets coated. Like you really wanna make sure the brown sugar is packed in every little nook and cranny of the fish. Set the lid on. And there we go, folks. We have one of our trout at least sitting in some brine or some brown sugar. I really should have brought a bigger Tupperware or like two of them so they could be soaking for the same amount of time. So we'll let this guy sit for three or four hours, then we'll put the other one in. But it's dinner time now, folks. I was gonna have those trout, but like I said, we got a late start. So I got here some creamy potato with bacon and cheese soup. Got a bunch of these cans in the fire. I'll pack these out later for sure. Just set them right there for now. Boom. Go ahead and set her on there. Yeah. 
try our soup. That's pretty good right there. Guys, if you're gonna go camping, bring a spoon along with a fork or else you'll have this problem. I mean, the one time I bring soup out and I forget to bring a spoon. Wonderful. Now folks, we're actually gonna make some hot cocoa. I know I've got a fire right here all made that I could cook on, but I just need to boil up some water. So I think this is gonna be the quickest and easiest way. Go ahead and set our water right on there to boil. Go ahead and take our hot cocoa mix and dump it right in there. Stir it around. Let's try a little bit of this stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boys. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Cheers. Look at that. Frothy on top. That is hot. Well, if I knew that I wasn't going to be smoking the fish tonight, I'd still be fishing right now. It's getting a little chilly out here. Like, it was pretty warm today. Once that sun starts to go down and you're 10,000 feet in elevation, it gets cold quick. We do have some daylight left, probably about an hour, hour or so. So why don't we use that time to go to another lake, see if we can catch us some more fish. End this day off with a bang, huh? Here we are, folks. This beautiful lake. Got here at the perfect time when the fish are just starting to hit the surface. Oh, there was one right there. I just spooked him off the shore. He was sitting right there. Oh, shoot. Well, I don't know if we're getting this back. I'm just gonna have to walk back with it. Hopefully it comes. Yes, got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I think that was a fish. I unsnagged it, started reeling back, and I think a fish hit it. Dang it. Well guys, nothing. They're jumping everywhere. They sure are jumping, but they do not want to bite. All right, well, let's get back to camp, I guess. Get back there. Well guys, that pretty much does it for today. But anyway guys, I switched out that trout in the brown sugar, so the other one's uh, marinating for now. I'm really excited to try this. I love brown sugar and I love fish. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day tomorrow. We're gonna go fish another lake. Um, hopefully the roads are open, I don't know. It's pretty high up in elevation and I don't know if the snow's melted off the roads quite yet. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching day number one and I'll see you in the morning. Morning. Whew. Well, good morning, folks. I'm not gonna lie, that was not the best night of sleep I've ever had. It doesn't look like the tent's very tilted downhill. Well, let me tell you, once you're in there, I was sliding down all night. But anyway, this morning, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make a fire in our smoker here, get a big bed of coals because, let's see, by the time they get done smoking, it's gonna be lunchtime. So that's the first thing I wanna do this morning. It's also a little windy this morning. So we'll let that burn down. I'm just gonna slowly add more pieces of wood in there and I know that there's gonna be some like super experienced trout smoker out there who's like oh you need to be using cherry wood 
oh, you need to be using mesquite wood and all this other fancy crap. You know, guys, I don't think it really matters. It matters, but like, whatever. I'm just using regular old wood. It'll still taste good. So here we have our fish that's been marinating, and here we have the other one that I took out. I actually put this one in tin foil, which uh, is probably what I should have done to both the fish, is wrap them up in a bunch of tin foil and then dump the brown sugar in there. Oh yeah, folks. Look at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them both in a bunch of tin foil, set them down, and put them both in the tin foil. Oh man. And I'm gonna take them over here. And then we're gonna rinse these fish off because if you just set them in the smoker like this, when they're this full of, you know, flavor, it's gonna be way too overpowering and it's not gonna taste very good. Whew. So you always wanna rinse them off before you start smoking. All right guys, so now we have our trout all rinsed off and we're gonna let them sit right there and just kinda air dry for about 15, 20 minutes or so. Meanwhile, we got our coals burning down. That's what we want. I'm just gonna spread them out and then keep adding little pieces of wood like that. The more smoke, the better. Look at that, <laughs> full of flavor. All right, we will go ahead and set this one on just like that. Boom. So we have our fish in there. We have a nice hot bed of coals, just smoking them up like that. That is what you want. Last thing we're gonna do, seal off the entrance here. Get another big branch right there and another one right there. And hopefully that's sealed up enough. Sweet. It's been a while since I've had smoked trout, so this should be really, really good. And this is the first time I will ever have smoked trout with brown sugar. Now, gotta wait about four hours. All right guys, it's been about two hours. These guys have been smoking in here. We still got smoke going, that's good. I've added a few pieces here and there. Oh yeah, so look, we still got some smoke right there. I've just been putting little sticks on there and they don't catch on fire, but they just sit there and smoke. Okay, okay, oh look at that, look at that. It's already peeling away. Ooh, that's looking good. And you can also tell if they're smoking by the skin, if the skin starts really curling up like that, that's a good sign. So time check, it is currently 11.34, and I probably put them in there around 9, 9.30, probably about two hours or so. So, oh yeah, we're getting a lot of smoke. That's what I wanna see. So I'd say in another hour and a half, they'll probably be done. Yeah, I took off my jacket because it's getting kind of warm out here. I mean, it gets below freezing at night, and then in the day, since you're a lot closer to the sun, it gets really warm so it's like whatever just pick one will you anyway i'll get back with you guys in about an hour and a half see what we got in here Whew. oh yeah pull them off look at that so here's this one this is the smaller one and i'm just bending it back like this and look at that that looks good to me. This part's a little thicker, so I don't know if it'll be cooked on this side, huh? No, looks good. Looks pretty good. Now let's give it a taste test here. Peel off a little piece. That looks pretty good to me. Mmm, mmm, oh yeah. Oh yeah, folks, that is the stuff. This thicker part, it's a little softer, so I don't think it kind of, you know, has that more tough jerky flavor that you get when you smoke fish. It's a little bit thicker, but uh, let's try on this end where it's a little bit thinner. I kind of like that chewy flavor or that chewy texture. Oh, look at that. Wow check on this other one. So there's this one. When the skin gets really leathery like that, that's how you know it's getting done. See, look. So the smoke was hitting it on the lower part of the fish right there, but up near the tail where, where the smoke wasn't really hitting it, that's still pretty raw. So what we're gonna have to do is remove the meat from right here and then set it back on so this part can keep cooking. 
comes right away from the skin. Look at that. Oh, it's just like beef jerky, but fish. And there we go, folks. Smoked trout. I know it's not a lot, but I got the rest um, smoking in there. I just wanted to make sure they were fully cooked, so I got the stuff that I knew was cooked, but there we go. Finished product. Waited a long time for this. The best part is the end pieces. Really chewy. Ooh, all right, let's see how they're looking. Oh yeah, they're done. All that meat near the tail, that's all cooked through. Sweet. So I'm actually gonna save the rest and then we can just snack on this throughout the day. Anytime you need a little dose of protein, just whip this out got yourself some smoked fish. But now folks, I think it's time to clean up camp and go fishing. All right guys, so for the smoker, I'm gonna take the string down. And then guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove the branches. So I'm actually not gonna dismantle the uh, teepee thing I got going on here. Cause uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to like come back and reuse it or like have someone else use it. Or maybe one of you guys can come find it. So uh, we're just gonna leave it up right there. Kind of a cool little structure. But I got about two hours till I have to go home. So let's go to a lake, try to catch some fish, make the best of it. Let's go. Thought I could make it out of there in two wheel drive. Nope. So there's some people back there who actually stopped me while I was driving and they said, they asked me where I was going and I was like, this lake? And they're like, I don't think you can get, a, get in there. There's too much snow. They said that they couldn't even make it with their truck. So I don't know. We might not be able to make it to this lake. But uh, I'm gonna go drive up and just see how much snow there is. Maybe I can uh, make it through, but I don't know. I'm glad I ran into those guys, kind of gave me a heads up. Uh, yeah, folks, I don't think we're getting up there. It looks pretty snowy up there and uh, little chance I'll make it up without sliding off the road or getting stuck. Dang it, dang it, dang it. I was really looking forward to fishing that lake, but I mean, it's better to just wait a week for it to melt off than to risk it and get stuck. Last time I tried to get into a fishing spot when the snow was too high, I got stuck, blew a transmission, and bent my door all the way back. Hence the damage. So I learned my lesson. I don't mess with that. So I guess we'll just have to go find somewhere else to fish. I do want to catch fish today. All right guys, here we are at this lake. This one's a lot lower in elevation. This lake has a lot of fish, but a lot of small fish, as opposed to the lake that I wanted to fish, which is a trophy lake. I do want to catch some cutthroat by the time this video is over, and that is why I'm here. Lots of cutthroat and lots of rainbows in here, so. But, but let's, get, let's get it going, boys, let's go. The water is really stained, like really stained. You probably only have a couple feet of visibility, which usually isn't great. Whoa, I got a fish, no! Whoa, I got, I still got him. Oh my gosh, what the heck? That was the weirdest thing. I'm recording, sweet. I casted it out and I don't even really think I reeled it all and all of a sudden I had a fish, look at that. Oh, it's a rainbow, not what I'm after. Where's your cutthroat buddy at? Holy cow, you know folks, I think all the rainbows I've caught from these lakes have been wild and you can clearly tell if they're wild I mean, look at this. First of all, beautiful fish, clean fins. Look, you can see all of his fins are there, nice and clean. And I've caught them when they're like really, really, I've caught rainbows out of this lake when they're like four or five inches ice fishing. 
So I know that they are reproducing in here. I don't know if they're like swimming up a stream or just spawning out in the lake. So there we go, folks. Beautiful rainbow. Sweet. There we go, another one right by shore. That's a little better. That's a little better. Rainbow, rainbow, dang it. So beautiful, look. This one even has a little orange, orange uh, thing on his fin. Got another one, folks. Got another one. I'll be 20 minutes after. <gasps> it's a cutthroat, yes. Folks, this is what we're after. Look at that, look how beautiful that fish is. They are spawning this time of year. Cutthroat spawn in the spring. And uh, when they do, they get these magnificent colors. I mean, look at that, super dark. And look at that jaw. That might be the reddest jaw slash I've seen on a cutthroat. Absolutely beautiful, I love these fish. First cutthroat of the trip and third species of the trip. How do you like that? There we go. Barely hooked on the bottom of the lip. Get him back quick and there he goes. Off to fight another day. So I'm letting it sink all the way to the bottom. I'm just watching my line and it's sinking and then once it stops you know you're on bottom. And I'm just slowly creeping it across the mud and the rocks. Oh, like there was another one. There was another one. There we go. There's another one. All the way on the bottom. There we go, guys. We figured them out. All the way on the bottom. They are hugging the bottom. It's a rainbow. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I love these fish. Guys, never gets old. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I know you guys have been liking these camping videos lately. So if you guys keep liking them, heck, I'll keep doing them. But if you did like this video, go down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. But other than that, folks, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.